In this video, I want to cover something which a lot of people have asked me in the past few months. What is the roadmap for ethical hacking or hacking in general? How to become a hacker or how to get into web hacking, web security, this and that. This video is basically a dedicated video on how you can learn hacking. And sorry for the clickbait, but this is not a roadmap. In fact, there is no roadmap to learn hacking and we are going to understand why this is a wrong question although it has the right intent but the way this is structured is slightly wrong there is no roadmap for learning hacking if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow so let's first of all understand what exactly hacking is right so building something you know if you're learning to program you are actually learning to build something Right? Whereas when you're trying to learn hacking or trying to hack into a system, you're actually doing the reverse. You're trying to figure out the system and then attack one of its weakest endpoints. Right, That could be a remote system, that could be a local system and so on. So by definition, in terms of programming, when you're learning to build something, you have the books and checklist on best practices, what you should be following in terms of security, what you should be not following in terms of security, those, those kinds of things. And you would have, you know, a bunch of frameworks, firewalls, this and that to protect you against hacking. But when you're figuring out the reverse way, there is pretty much no set guideline which ensures you that a particular system can be compromised. Sure, just like best guidelines over here, there are some best efforts like the OWASP top 10 list where you can just take a look at what common vulnerabilities exist. You have things like tools like SQL map, for example, which can run SQL injections for you over a particular endpoint. But in general, there is no generic way, I mean, that you should be learning as such that, that enables you to become a hacker immediately. You can call your a full stack developer even if you go to code dams full stack learning path and complete it then you are a full stack developer but in general there is there should not be any such learning path for completely learning hacking because it's basically built on the knowledge you gain over here and then reverse engineering that knowledge so then the question becomes what should you do what is the point of this video so in this video just like what i always do share my past experiences with what i know about hacking and web security in general and how i was able to execute that so just to add context i have done a bunch of bug bounty programs in the past if you're not aware about what bug bounty program is it's basically a white hat practice where companies say that hey we allow you to pen test our website we allow you to test for security vulnerabilities on our website and in exchange if you responsibly disclose them to us that is you know you don't sell it on black hat forums or you know darknet and something then we will actually give you a monetary reward right so i have got 3133.7 which is like a very nice number from Google's site for discovering a cross-site scripting attack in their blogger.com platform a few years back. I think small amount of monetary rewards from other providers like InVision, Sony, Microsoft and so on. And what I did in terms of reporting them, for example in case of Google it was a cross-site scripting attack. In case of InVision I think it was a CSRF, I don't exactly remember, so it might be wrong, but it was CSRF at least in one of these three. Then I think for Microsoft or Sony, there was something with login issue where the login credentials were not properly removed on logging out. So that posed a security issue. But yeah, I mean, the biggest one which I have reported ever is this Google one. So I'm going to tell you how I did that. The way I executed this cross-site scripting attack or found out in the first place was that I was I, if you don't know about me, earlier I used to work at a place where we used to build blogger templates and sell them online, right? So what we will do is we will write the blogger templates in one file. If you have ever used blogger.com, you know that there's just a single XML file for a blogger template. You have to code it on your own. And once you upload it, the other person, the other person who has purchased the blogger template can just pretty much upload it on their blog and edit it with the layout section. I don't know how much blogger has changed in the last five, four, five years, but the last time I checked it, it was that. So this is one fine day, I think in the month of some April, when I was trying to code a template in XML. And what I discovered was that funnily enough, something which I was writing in the C data tag 
which is usually this the syntax is usually used to kind of you know tell the xml parser to ignore whatever comes until the stacks tags close right so what i found out was that c data tag in the template xml was behaving weirdly when i save this and go to the layout tab which was actually like a ui representation of this xml file right so this this was just my understanding in the sense that when i was using a broken c data tag i was seeing that the layout was a bit funny right so I exploited this in a way that I was able to include certain JavaScript, which actually got directly executed on this layout tab. Now, and of course this layout tab was inside an iframe. So I was also, I also had to escape the iframe in general, but that was possible because it was running in the, under the same origin. So what impact did it create? Well, it created an impact in the sense that if I sell this template to somebody or maybe just upload it for free, and if somebody uploads it, this template on their blog, I would get access to their blogger.com account. And because blogger.com account at that time, I guess, as far as I remember, at that time, it also shared similar authentication cookies with other Google products like YouTube or, you know, Gmail you pretty much could guess, get access to the complete G suite of the user at that time, just by getting them to upload a template, which looks very normal to their one of their blogs if, you're, if they are running that. So why did I share this with you? The reason I shared this with you is because there is no part where I would have to learn hacking in order to execute this. The only few things I knew at that at this time was HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and the fact that Google has a white hat program where if I have a vulnerability to report to them, they would reward me somehow. These were the only two things I knew. And I knew about, of course, I also knew about XSS, that is the cross-site scripting attack. So sure, the kind of vulnerabilities which exist in the system, that's a start to get started. But how do you execute them or how do you find them in general? Tools can help. Your observation skill can help, but that usually comes with a lot of experience and a lot of practice. All right, so part number two is now, how do you practice the hacking part, right? Part number one is you actually have to learn whatever you are learning, just keep on learning that. If you're learning about web security, that's fine. If you're learning about reverse engineering, then you need to know a lot of Linux tooling. I am not a reverse engineer. I don't know how to work with binaries on a native level, but some people do and you know, Hex dump, for example, is a very simple and popular tool to just get a hex dump of a binary file of any file as such. So understanding these tools, how to work with them, figuring out how computers and file systems in Linux, usually how they work, how the files work, how various kinds of encodings work is, is a lot of stuff in the Linux side. To be honest, like I said, I'm not a reverse engineer security enthusiast, so I don't know a lot of that. But in terms of web development, I can tell you literally, like if you're trying to attack a PHP server on the back end, you're trying to attack a server which runs PHP, you need to know what are the weak points of PHP or maybe like Python, which is running an old Flask version. So you need to know how you can bring it down or, you know, some somehow exploit some vulnerability in some older versions, right? If you are using, for example, Node.js with MongoDB, let's say, then you need to know a little bit about how NoSQL injections work and how you can execute them in a node environment. All right, this is part one. Part one is learning the usual stuff, right? Part two is practice hacking. So how do you practice? Well, the first thing which comes to my mind is of course, look for sites with these white hat programs, right? You don't want to be messing around popular websites and by mistake doing something which results in some random action and this is like a disclaimer which I should also give anyway. So mess around with sites only where you have permission. So I mean most popular websites, you know, most common websites, Google, Facebook, this and that, they have a responsible disclosure page. But if you are just wondering if they have or not, so you can take a look at sites like hackerone.com which includes a bunch of these sites which publishes their vulnerability program. You can Google the site name and then responsible disclosure. This, this should also give you a great idea. But yeah, I mean, to look for the sites which opt into this programs like these, you can go to hackerone.com. So you can start messing around these sites. And the way you mess around these sites is that you start tinkering where you can supply input. 
right? That could be input fields. That could be some Ajax call, which is made in the background without you knowing. That could be changing the headers of those requests. That could be somehow like trying to, like I said, I mean, you have to be smart about what you're tinkering, right? Usually those will be the API endpoints, whether that's in terms of sending corrupt data to see what the server responds and then figuring out what can be done. But yeah, this is this is usually the starting point in pretty much analyzing or doing anything with a website. The next way you can learn, which I came to know a lot later about, I mean, I was trying to just learn web security by myself and experimenting on the real website, but you can get a good, a good amount of learnings by attempting these CTFs. What a CTF is, a CTF stands for capture the flag and these are competitions which are organized where systems are deliberately made a little vulnerable where they would hide a particular string or a file or something for the attacker to find by attacking that system, right? So you're going to find this a lot of CTF on CTF time. A lot of organizations organize this all the time. A lot of universities organize this all the time. In fact, when I was in university, we had a club called Bits Creek where we used to participate in a lot of CTFs as a team. This is like a team event, right? But you can do it individually as well that's completely fine but we used to organize a lot of cts we used to participate in a lot of cts as well and this is like a really fun activity as well because you have to find a flag and you know do something around that and the third one is kind of like ctfs uh, where you have i think hack the box so hack the box is a place where you actually get live or not exactly live environments but actually get sandbox environments which are kind of like ctf but different in a way that hack the box usually have a lot this this website this is like a website you know it's not like a general concept hackthebox.com or something but what this is it's just like you use codam for learning and interacting with playgrounds in your you know in the labs when you're learning programming similarly in the hack the box they will give you a virtual network they would give you a virtual computer maybe to access and figure out what is wrong with the system attack it remotely or online in a way and have that whole sandbox all the time available to you and of course learning about web security is also an important way to practice this why because when you learn about web security you can secure your own, your own products right whatever you're learning for example you're learning about csrf attacks or you know cross-site scripting attacks and this and that so when you're learning about those things you will automatically implement those features in your product as well in your websites and your stuff as well if you're doing anything moderately complex so that is also like it's not exactly hacking but it's more like defending against hackers which that knowledge also is like important because when you're trying to attack you're not just thinking how i can attack you are also thinking about what measures the other person might have taken so it's it's like a it's like a fight with yourself in a way that you are now not the attacker but the victim and you want to protect your server somehow so learning about web security in general is also like an important way but like i said learning to hack in general if you wanted to hack google there is no roadmap to hack google right this bug which I discovered was luck, plus a little bit of knowledge that I had the knowledge to actually, you know, be able to exploit it in a way which also had a proof of concept which I could summon. But yeah, I guess if I had to summarize, hacking is mostly, I mean, until the system is like truly really bad or you have some backdoor tools from NSA or something, until you are in, in one of those two areas, it's a lot of times it is luck and the correct knowledge at that point right it's a mix of both you cannot just if you have the best knowledge but the system is truly not having a lot of surface area for attacking i mean it's just it's just a jam stack site you cannot really do a lot in that case right similarly if you just rely on luck obviously that wouldn't matter because you wouldn't get anywhere but yeah i mean i guess this little bit of structure not a complete roadmap should give you a good idea on how to can how you can start hacking or how you can start learning about hacking step one is actually keep on learning what you're doing Step two is actually try to figure out a few websites, which you're seeing on hackerone.com. Try to mess around with whatever the input is to the server, whether that's through input fields, backend API calls, something. See, observe how their API endpoints are working. Mess around with headers, data, corrupt data, large payload size data, so on. Try to attempt CTFs in a similar domain and read the solutions, read the write-ups written by other people. This will give you a lot of amazing insights and information. Try hack the box and 
of course learn about web security in general it's not like a one-time process this is like a you know you have to repeat this over and over again combined with just building a lot of knowledge in general so this is about how to learn hacking but in a web security side right things get interesting like i said when you get into reverse engineering which is like at least what what i feel is is a bit harder than the web security part because you actually need to know very well how the linux computers or the linux systems work but the fundamental concepts remain same right mess carefully around sandbox environments which you have created hack the box can help you in here definitely ctfs for ctfs there are usually a few challenges uh, which like really require you to have a remote exploitation of a server Usually you, in CDS, you would find the find like crypto challenges, cryptography challenges, not the crypto which you guys trade these days. Web dev challenges, uh, you know, sometimes technography as well. Not a lot of true remote hacking or reverse engineering. Reverse engineering as well. My bad. I mean, you can always download that binary file and reverse that. But yeah, this is this is this is interesting. Linux part is interesting, but I won't want to say a lot in that space because that's that's honestly not my space so yep that's pretty much it for a uh, learning to hack roadmap or learning to hack not exactly a roadmap but a guideline what do you think about this if this was helpful make sure you leave a like and comment below what part you found helpful or what you are going to try after watching this video that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code Dump's discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching